Howdy folks, welcome back. Today I'm working on this Massey Ferguson 1240 compact utility tractor. It needs a clutch. It will barely pull itself in the lowest gear and it's basically unusable the way it is. That's a four wheel drive tractor or front wheel assist as we say in the business. This is actually made in Japan by a Seki Corporation. There's nothing Massey Ferguson about it other than the paint job and the stickers. A pretty nice setup. It's got this flat platform. It's really easy to get on and off. It does have a reverser, but it's not a shuttle. You have to use the clutch to shift that. He's got a loader for it, and the loader hydraulics are built right into the, the platform here. I think it's got a differential lock and all kinds of cool features. Three cylinder diesel engine. It's got a real three point hitch. Power takeoff, remote hydraulics. Yeah, nice little setup. Anyway, I'll demonstrate for you. The, uh, the clutch is, it's no good. They've adjusted it and it does have free play, but it will not, it will not go in anything but the lowest gear. Give her a little glow plug. If I put it in snail, that works. But if I go from snail to turtle, that works. And if I step on the brake pedal, And forget about rabbit one or rabbit two. Well, let's get to it. I don't think I've ever done a clutch job video, at least not on a tractor. It's pretty straightforward, typically. Just like any clutch, in order to access it, we have to separate the engine from the transmission. The difference on a tractor versus a car or a truck or something is that the engine and transmission in a tractor are structural members. So we actually had to split the whole tractor in two and roll the engine and front axle away from the transmission and the rear axle. Which sounds kind of daunting but you know the clutch is a wear item and the tractor is designed to be taken apart that way so that it can be serviced. So we're going to have to contend with, you know, some cables here. This is the throttle cable. That's the pressure line for the hydraulics. This is the return line for the hydraulics. But if you look, there's a flexible coupling right there where it's designed to be split in two. Most of the harnesses are going to have a connector at the firewall that's going to allow those to be split in two. This side, I think, is going to be even easier. The exhaust is all in the front side of the tractor. There is a drive shaft at the bottom for the front axle. We'll have to figure out how to split that. Wah, wah, wah. Come on. Seven millimeter. This is a freaking Chrysler product. That's the fuel line, by the way. The fuel tank's behind the seat. Got a 
break the steering shaft. If we had the right size socket. Well, I think we're pretty close to cracking this thing in half. I'll show you guys how I was taught to split tractors. I'm not saying it's the right way, but if it worked for dad, it should work for us. I've got a couple of wooden wedges. We're gonna jam those between the frame and the front axle on both sides. Now the front axle articulates on a central pivot, and if we don't block it, as soon as we separate the engine from the transmission, it could just flop over to one side. So there's actually a bell housing bolt all the way at the top behind the engine, which you really can't access, but they were nice enough to give us a little access hole through the firewall here with a little grommet. Stick an extension through there and back it right out. Pretty clever. Well, here's the splitting setup. I've got the floor jack underneath of the engine oil pan and a bottle jack underneath of the transmission. And I've already got the bell housing cracked so we should be able to roll this thing apart. Yeah, there's your problem. It's right down to the rivets. Cool. Make sure you get a nice deep breath of clutch dust. It's good for you. She's a little moist. I think we'll recommend a rear main seal. All right guys, we're done until we can get some parts. We need a new clutch disc and a new pressure plate. This thing is completely pooched. It's actually worn right through the rivet heads that hold the friction material on. So there is, there's actually negative life in this clutch disc. We also need to get the flywheel machined. The rivets have actually worn a groove in the friction surface, so if we're ever going to get full contact, we're going to have to machine that. And we're going to replace the pilot bearing. This one's just a simple ball bearing. Yeah, shouldn't be a big deal. I did inquire about parts before we took it apart, and I was told there were two different clutch options. One has four friction pucks, and then this style, which has a full circumference of friction material. We couldn't tell which one it was going to require until we got it apart. Also, the clutch is pretty crazy expensive. 900 bucks for a clutch and pressure plate. So we'll see what happens. I'll bring you guys back for that. All right, folks, some time has passed and we now have parts. Ended up going aftermarket for the clutch parts. We got a brand new pressure plate, clutch disc, pilot bearing, and throw out bearing, all from high capacity. Got a new rear main seal from Agco and I got the flywheel machined. I was gonna do it myself on the brake lathe, but I wasn't sure what to do about this step. It's kind of an odd setup. The friction surface is actually higher than the bolt surface for the pressure plate. And I wasn't sure how to machine that. So I took it to them and they weren't sure how to machine it either. So they ended up just uh, machining the friction surface. And then the, the clutch manufacturer recommends a 20,000 step, half a millimeter between the pressure plate surface and the friction surface. And it's actually, it ended up being about 40 thousandths. So we're thinking that that's a minimum spec. So it should be, it should be just fine. Also got some filters. There should be a fuel filter, an engine oil filter, a trans oil filter, and 
a new O-ring for that hydraulic pressure line that runs back to the transmission. While standard seal installation practices apply, we're going to fill up the back side with some grease. Just so there's no chance that spring could pop out. And we'll put a little bit on the sealing surface as well so it doesn't burn up on us. I'm actually not sure why, but there was a spacer under the lip of the old seal. And the parts breakdown shows that spacer being there, so we're going to reuse it. I'm not sure if it's just to take up the slack so they can use a standard seal or if it's designed so that if you have a ring worn in your the end of the crankshaft you can move the seal in a little bit and get a new surface. I'm not sure. There's no wear sleeve on this crankshaft so if you did have a groove you'd have a problem. But luckily crankshaft's in perfect condition on this tractor. So we're going to put a little bit of Loctite 515 on the outside diameter here. We'll use our official seal installation tool slash axle nut socket. Yeah, so it looks like we have to put the pilot bearing in before we can put the bolts and this retaining plate on. Uh, we'll stick one in to hold it for right now. A little bit of blue Loctite on those bolts. The ring gear on the flywheel is also in perfect condition. I don't think this tractor has very many hours on it. I'm not sure why the clutch is already burned up in it. Can't find a torque spec for these, so we're just gonna put them at 100 foot-pounds. That should be fine. Now the tricky part. Got to install the clutch disc and the pressure plate. And you got to pay attention because there's a lot of things you can do wrong. The clutch disc only goes in one way. The spring basket has to go towards the inside. On the pressure plate, there are six bolts. Four of them, are, four of them will look like this. They're actually stamped with a four. Two of them will look like this and they have an unthreaded section right here. In the flywheel, there are two holes that are actually counterboard. And these two special bolts go in those two special holes. That's your alignment for the pressure plate. The way it goes is you put the clutch disc in like so. Now the pressure plate. And if you look at the pressure plate, it has two holes that have a small hole next to them. Those holes correspond to the special bolts. So we're going to put that on kind of like so. A little bit of blue Loctite on those. Now normally like on a clutch for a car or something they would include a little cheesy plastic alignment tool. No such luck on this guy, so we're going to use this universal alignment tool. It has interchangeable ends to fit in the pilot bearing, and then a little cone here. And I'm not sure it's going to work because the way this is designed. Yeah, might work. Alright, well, let's try it. Okay, 
Well, the reason they go through all these extra steps on the pressure plate is because there's actually two splines. There's a spline that's fixed to the outside of the pressure plate and then the spline on the clutch disc itself. And that's for the live PTO. The spline inside here for the clutch disc is for the transmission, obviously. And this outside spline is for the live PTO. So even if you push the clutch pedal down and disengage the clutch disc, this spline out here rotates any time that the engine rotates. So you, if you have a mower or something like that, you don't want that to stop every time that you push the clutch. Older tractors did not have live PTOs or live hydraulics. So anytime you push down the clutch, whatever you were towing behind you or lifting with the hydraulics would also stop. And where that really got sketchy is with things like mowers. If you push the clutch down, the momentum of the mower would keep trying to spin the transmission. And even though you push the clutch down, it's still trying to move the tractor forward. So they actually have overrunning clutches you can buy to eliminate that problem. All right, now, once the clutch is installed, we can remove these three caging bolts here. They should actually be loose, and they are. So that just keeps the, the springs in the, in the pressure plate compressed during shipping so the whole thing doesn't come flying apart. There we go. There's your double spline. The outside one's the PTO, inside one's the transmission. That's what makes these tractors clutches so hard to get together because now you have to align two splines at the same time. So we are gonna put a little grease on the splines here just to assist us in getting this thing together. Just don't go crazy because you don't want it slinging around in there and getting on the friction disc and causing problems. Well, this tractor had RTV on the bell housing. Just to keep water out, I'm sure. Because there is a drain hole here. Or a weep hole, whatever you want to call it, in case anything were to get inside. Okay, so we just started on the on the shaft. Oh, is that it? Pretty darn close. I've got all the bell housing bolts in and tight, except for the two bolts through the starter, which do also go through the bell housing. But I think before we install the starter, we're gonna adjust the clutch. So it's got way too much free travel right now. The linkage is here, just inside the firewall. So let's, let's adjust that. I don't know what the spec is supposed to be. 
we'll probably put it at about, I don't know, around 20 millimeters, three quarters of an inch, somewhere around there, free travel. Looks like we just shortened the linkage a little bit. That worked. Seems about right. Probably want a little extra free play since it's a brand new clutch and it's gonna wear in pretty quickly. Well, the starter also gets some RTV. They really don't want water or whatever getting inside this bell housing. I'm not entirely sure why. All right, folks, we're getting pretty close. I think we're done with these. I've got the hydraulic connections hooked back up, so new O-ring underneath this guy. And then we hooked up that little short piece of hose on the suction line. I think I've got most of the connectors reconnected. Shut down solenoid, oil pressure sensor. This one here is for the voltage regulator, which is inside the hood. It should start without that, so we'll leave that disconnected for now. Got this bulk harness connected. Uh, there's a ground here we're gonna have to hook up. Yeah, the drive shaft underneath is reconnected. We're gonna go ahead and fill it up with some transmission oil. I did spin on a new filter. That lives right there underneath of the fuel tank and the transmission fill is right behind the hydraulic remotes. I believe this is supposed to have a 10W30 combination transmission and hydraulic fluid and it's supposed to use that stuff right there, Agco Power Fluid 821XL. I believe it's also called, what is it also called? Permatran. Anyway, this stuff here from Farm Fleet is the equivalent. It's quite a bit cheaper. It'll be just fine. I think we'll do the fuel filter first before we start it. And then once we're sure it's gonna work, we'll do the engine oil change. Just cause it's We've already had this line off. I don't want to try to bleed it twice. Ah, worse. Well, at least it was on camera. Now it should have a bleed position. I think if we flip it to this guy, it says air. And we needed rain. Everybody's happy about it except for Mr. Max. You don't like getting wet, do you, pup? The fuel tank behind the seat's actually higher than the fuel bowl, so it gravity bled no problem. I was gonna try to start it, but I guess there's nothing, there's no power here without that voltage regulator being plugged in. So we are gonna have to hook that up. <laughs> well, figured out why I wouldn't run without this thing plugged in. Uh, it's not a voltage regulator at all. It is, come on, it's a fuse box. So yeah, probably needs that.
torqued to 1.6 kilogram meters. Whatever that is. Straight from the land of the rising sun. Looks a little bit better than that tiny little purillator that was on it. Pretty sloppy, Wes. Pretty sloppy. There we go. I feel pretty bad about it, too, because there's, there's definitely not been any oil spilled on the floor so far. straight to rabbit too. One time, if you asked me to do an outro, I knew exactly what the video was going to be about so I could make the ad outro make sense. Are we ever going to drive? All right, lady. So there's a key right here. Okay, got it. You need to turn it counterclockwise. That'll activate the glow plugs. Okay. She's pre combustion, so it's hard to start. So let that go for about five, ten seconds. Clockwise. Okay. Okay, now you gotta push the. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to tell you what the pedals do before you start driving. Oh, that would be nice. Learn from the last tractor video. <laughs> so, on the left is your clutch pedal. This one? Yep. On the right is the brake pedals. There's one for each wheel, but they're locked together right now. So, okay. that's, think of that one, as one big pedal. Okay. And the parking brake's on right now, so when you get it started, you'll have to push this brake pedal. Okay. And it'll release. Okay. So, push down the clutch pedal, and then you can turn the key and start it. Select either snail, turtle, rabbit one, or rabbit two. I would suggest rabbit one. Not snail. Snail's pretty slow. This snail. Snail. Oh, snail. Now you're in. That's turtle. Turtle one. No, it's not going to do anything yet. Do, 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 do. Push this forward. Hey, you gotta release the brake. What brake? Push the brake pedal. There you go. Do I have an accelerator? Yeah. Is that this one? Yep. Uh, if you want to stop, you got to push the clutch in. Neutral. <laughs> okay. It's alive. What do we think, lady? Is it fixed? I don't know. It ran really smooth. Once I put it into rabbit one. Yep. Um, I want to... Wait, no. Don't mess with that. So it's actually got 16 gears. I think there's another four gears over here. Oh my goodness. I could barely figure out these four. Yeah. This is a nice little tractor. I liked it. It was nice to cruise around our little 
backyard with. What do we do with this? I have no idea. Really nice little tractor. I like the four wheel drive. It's pretty easy to work on. I'd like to point out that is not what you were saying last night when I checked in on you. <laughs> yeah, we had a little struggle getting the clutch. We're getting the, uh, whatever, putting the stuff back together. My fault, not the tractor's fault. Other than the clutch parts being kind of expensive, I think, uh, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to complain about. I don't think any of the gauges work. Uh, yeah, I don't think so either. All right, folks, there you go. How to replace a clutch in your Massey Ferguson 1240 tractor. Not a bad job. Would you call that a DIY friendly job? Yes. I'd say so. There's, I know there's like special fancy splitting stands you can buy and stuff, but this small tractor, it's easily done with just regular, regular shop tools. Bottle jacks and floor jacks and two by fours and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye. You're fine. Go. Hey, don't ride the clutch. Hey. Yeah, all right, go ahead. Watch out now. Turn the key off. Wow, you actually turned it off successfully. I didn't kill it. Judged. Yeah, it's confusing. In order to stop, Kill. You have to, in order to stop, you have to hit the clutch and the brake. I'm Got not you. used to driving a manual, so. You know who you need to hang out with? My father. <laughs> he is the original clutch Nazi. My dad's a pretty easy going guy, but there's Stop. there's a few Ooh. things he doesn't allow and uh, slipping the clutch, riding the clutch, holding the clutch down too long. He's the original Nazi when it comes to tractor clutch usage. I was going to put some air in this tire, but I'm, uh, I'm afraid to. She's looking pretty scary. I took the cap off the valve stem there and all I got was water. Usually means the valve core is stuck and you're gonna lose all the fluid out of the wheel. So we're just gonna put that back together and and send it home. The rim is shot. He had somebody make this rim. They did a beautiful job. Said it was about half the price of the dealership. That's pretty cool.